railings. In the next part, we are going to learn how the railings work here in Revit. We can build railings on stairs, we have covered a little bit about this earlier, or we can add a railing to a floor, for example to limit a balcony. In the example I show you here, I need railing stair to avoid people falling into the ground. And this is the current perspective in a 3D view. Ok, the first thing I'm going to do, as this plan is a bit messy, is hiding some elements that I don't need for now, and also you get a bit of practice doing this. So, first I click in this dimension and hide the full category, and you can see that all the others also disappear. Then I go to this bed, do the same thing, to hide all the elements from the same category, in this case furniture. Then, to hide the plumbing fixtures, I can click on one of the elements of this bathroom. And finally, I just need to go to the kitchen, hide this freezer. And the remaining elements are casework. Ok, now we can insert the railings. Ok, we have to go to the icon at the Architecture tab and select the option Sketch Path. As I am in the sketch mode, I need to draw the railing, and I will stay with the method it's already selected, the Line tool. Make the first segment on the left, then click again at the corner to continue drawing, until I reach the wall again. Then click on the tick to confirm the railing, and switch to the 3D view to have a look at its appearance. Good, there it is. But, to be honest, I'm not very happy with this result. You can see that the railing is placed exactly in the border, and I don't think this is a very practical way to build it. Due to that reason, we are going to repeat this, first delete the railing, and activate again the railing tool. And before drawing, this time have a look at the options bar. First, I'm going to check this box, chain, because with this I will draw the lines continuously. Then I want to assign an offset distance as 100 mm, because I don't want to have the railing exactly in the extremity. Go to the balcony, draw the railing, and this time I have a margin of 10 cm from the border. And look that the segments in the corner trim automatically while I keep drawing. Let's click on the tick again to confirm it. And then we need the second balcony. Other drawing method is with peak lines. Set the same offset distance. And then I head towards the second balcony. And now look, depending on the position of the mouse, I can offset in the inner side of the floor or outside of it. Ok, now it's done. Go to the 3D view, and you can see they look better. However, if I don't like the shape of this family, I can go to the properties, and there are others here to select. Just click in the one that suits you better. This is a pipe style, and the last one, a glass panel. In the next part, I will give you useful tips regarding railings but not only. We will also see how we can copy elements to other floors, and how to keep them aligned with the former ones. So, have a look at this example. First, I want to place windows also in the second and third floors. How can we do that? Actually, it's easy. I'm going to click on a window, then right click, and select all instances that are visible in the view. In this case, I could also select entire project, the result would be the same. Then, I need to copy to the clipboard, then click on the arrow below paste and copy the objects aligned to select levels. So, I choose the levels where I want the windows, level 2 and level 3, and it's done. 
you can see that this is a simple and a very useful method. Now let's learn how to build stairs in a way that they reach from the bottom up to the last floor. So the first thing is to make the stairs. And we are going to use the method that we have already been covering previously in this tutorial. Let's choose the location line at the left side, considering the exterior support. Click in this intersection for the start point and draw half of the stairs in this side. Then, follow the extension track line to place the second run and connect them with the floor above. To put it in the right position, I'm going to use the Move tool, select this run, press Enter, and then click in this point and move it to the intersection of the wall below. Click on the tick to confirm the stairs and exit the sketch mode. Ah, and as what usually happens when I draw a stair in a U-shape, the rail is not continuous. When you switch to a 3D view, you can see that there is a break here. This time I'm going to solve this by just moving the position of the railing, so double click on it to edit it in the sketch mode and move the section that's on the landing a bit to the right. I'm going to set a distance of 10 cm, for example. Let's save this, and as you can see, the warning is no longer appearing, and the gap is now replaced with a flat section of railing. Now, we want to copy the stairs to the floors above. And there is a special button to do this process. I just need to select the stairs, and make sure you click on the stairs themselves and not on the railing. Then go here to Select Levels and Warning. Let's see what says. To create or modify multi-story stairs, you need a view where level lines are visible. So, I can't do this on floor plans, because I cannot see the levels, but this is a 3D view. It should work, of course, if I haven't hidden the level lines before. Let's go to Show Hidden Objects. And here they are. Click on one of the levels and unhide the category. OK, now I can repeat the process. Select Levels. And make sure you have this option turned on, Connect Levels. And this is going to be easy. Click on level 3, then hold CTRL and choose the level 4. Click on the tick, and now the stairs are connecting all the floors. So, nice. Now we are going to focus again on the railing. And as you can see, the railing is not continuous along all the stairs. The method that I used is like copying the stairs to the clipboard and pasting them in the different levels. So, we also need the railing here, in the section of the floor. OK, I'm going to switch to the level 1 floor plan and double click on the railing to go to the sketch mode. Here you can see these arrows, and they indicate the way that I need to go from down to up. Then what I need is to add a railing section also here. This is easy. I'm going to use the Line tool, then go to this endpoint and draw it towards the other side. I can confirm the changes. And look! That section was added to all the floors at the same time. But keep in mind that this is not perfect, as the railing is still not continuous on the turn to the next group of stairs. For now, we are going to leave it as it is. Although, it's possible to smooth this transition if you want it to appear that the railing also continues there. It just takes a bit of work. The final ending needs an extension here. But this time, I think the best is to add an extra railing in this side. 
I activate the command again and I'm going to add it towards the point where I have the exterior wall. I can confirm the changes and OK, it's not perfect. We can align this better. Ah, and the align tool will not work here. So in this case, it's better the moved command. After a few tries, I decided it's best to take the railing out of the place, activate move, select railing, press enter, click on the midpoint and place it exactly in the midpoint of the other railing. Finally, the other extremity can actually stay there. This position is not very important, as you can see the result. Or even, I could ignore the last segment, because it reaches the wall anyway, and it's fine. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, Cad in Black if you aren't a subscriber yet. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.